Hi, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Hungary here in Central Europe. I hope everybody has had a good week and is looking forward to a really nice, relaxing, energizing, perhaps productive, and of course, healthy weekend. Hi, Abiman. I'm doing great, feeling strong. Thank you. Hi, Carolina. Nice to see you in the class. Hi, Nikhil. Hi, Hassan. Welcome, members. This is a members chat class. Everybody is welcome to watch. To become a member, click the join button next to the subscribe button. And in 90 minutes, I will host a speaking part three class that will be connected to this part two cue card class that we're doing right now. So it's a good idea to stay tuned for both classes so you get uh, a comprehensive, uh, a complete uh, notion of what to do for these parts of the speaking interview. Hi, Ferdovs. Hi, Moni. Nice to see more members joining in. This lesson and the materials are presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Definitely visit us there. And for general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. That's general IELTS help. Dot com. I'll quickly show you what those websites look like. There's a lot of help for you. Um, and we even have live chat available now, certain times of the day on the class. So uh, lots and lots of help available for you. This is the academic website here with the blue background. Uh, you can click that big red button to join us there. And for the general IELTS, it's this green background, same kind of layout and then you can click that big red button uh, to join the premium package there. At the beginning of uh, this uh, chat, I included a 20% uh, discount code, R4TYJ, uh, which will get you 20% when you join. Okay, so uh, use that, it's for you. All right, everyone, so here we go back to the focus of today's lesson. Uh, if anybody has questions about the IELTS or our products, just email me, adrian at aehelp.com. Uh, hi, Rajveer. Hi, Kapil. Hi, Oas. Hi, Rashika. Nice to see many more members coming into the class. Um, so again, today, uh, speaking, part two, followed by part three. Uh, and then just uh, an FYI for your information, uh, from tomorrow until Tuesday, there's no class, okay? So no class on Saturday. I'm going to my younger brother's wedding tomorrow. Uh, so uh, yeah, I had to prioritize. I was thinking maybe not go to the wedding and just do the live class, but then I was like, nah, it's my younger brother. I should go to the wedding. So uh, no class uh, tomorrow, uh, but there will be class again on Wednesday, okay? So on Wednesday. Carolina says, congrats. Thanks, Carolina, I'll pass that on. All right, by the way, that was a joke. Of course, I'm going to his wedding. Um, I'm not that cool. All right. Um, the wedding uh, for Dobbs is actually in uh, here in Hungary, but I will be back in Canada um, later in the year. So I'm going to be moving around this year quite a bit. That, of course, depends on the whole COVID situation as well for Dobbs. So we'll see. Okay. All right. Thanks for the congratulations. Okay. So uh, let's get into um, the uh, speaking cue card. For the day. Uh, here we go. I'm just going to remind you to speak and I'm going to write it up here. So this is speaking, not just listening and reading and typing, but speaking. So make sure to speak in these classes, okay? Uh, speak and of course repeat uh, whatever I say and uh, copy my intonation and my enunciation. Thank you, Victor. Thank you, Abiman. Yeah, I really do appreciate those. Congratulations. I can Feel your love. Absolutely. All right. Um, so let's do this. Uh, here we go. So you're in the IELTS speaking interview and uh, you're doing a good job in part one. You're feeling confident. You're feeling fluent. And then the examiner says, all right, that is the end of part one. And now for part two, here's a card with some questions. Don't turn that over yet. Here's some note paper 
Here is a uh, pen. You will have one minute to look at the questions on the card. Think about your answers. You can take notes in that one minute if you wish, and then you will have two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start, when to stop. Your one minute preparation time begins now. Um, and so you turn over the card, and this is what you see. Uh, so you remember your step number one, and really I keep drilling these. So you've probably realized that these classes are quite redundant, uh, aside from different topics and uh, some different tips here and there, but the steps are usually the same. And that's because I want you to have these steps automatic in your mind. Uh, so what is your step number one? You turn over the card and instead of panicking or freaking out, you remember your first step. You're like, step one, this is what I do. Okay. Um, Carolina says, uh, read the question carefully. Yeah, Carolina, that's why I do it too. You're saying we need to practice. Absolutely. Practice makes perfect. Yeah. So read the question carefully and twice. Yeah, that twice is really important. So you read the card and especially this first piece, okay? The topic and the controlling idea because as you know, this is the topic and controlling idea, okay? Uh, these here are basically the details, okay? They're, it's all important, but if I had to say, this is the most important here, okay? So especially this part here, you want to read that twice, okay? So you want to read that two times, all right? Uh, and you can do it this way where you read, read it all and then you go back here and you read it again, okay? That's a good idea because these will help you to have a more clear idea of this. Right? So uh, let's do this together. So describe a beautiful piece of art that you have seen or heard as a painting or movie or music. You should say, what was the work of art? Where did you see it? What made this work of art beautiful? The meaning of this artwork and the impact this work of art had on you. Okay, and then I go back and I read this again. Describe a beautiful piece of art that you have seen or heard as a painting or movie or music. Okay, so art takes many forms. Sometimes when people read the word art, they panic. They think that they have to talk about a painting. It's not true. Music, dance, movies, those are all different forms of art. So keep your thinking broad, okay? unless the question actually says talk about a painting that you have seen, okay? But here it's keeping it more open, of course, because some people aren't really into paintings. So it's giving people an opportunity to talk about various types of art. Of course, focusing on just one that they have seen or heard. Okay, good. So we read through the questions and then we read this topic sentence and controlling idea twice to have a lot of clarity, okay? All right, so that was our step number one. And then a step number two, what is it? So again, step by step, step one, step two. What's step two, okay? So Carolina says, identify the question type. It's an object, it's present perfect. Yeah, so the object type in the tense, right? Yeah, Victor says, identify the category and the tenses of the question. Absolutely. Very good, Victor. You're all caught up with this information. I'm happy to see that. So, yeah. <clears throat> so, step two is identify the category of the topic, whether it's a person, place, object, event, or an idea. Um, and then, uh, and the tense or tenses, sometimes it's multiple, of the uh, question. Okay, so here um, the category is, okay, it's an object. So it's some kind of an art, right? So it's uh, some form of an object. Uh, it could be an auditory object, like a piece of music, okay? 
um, or it could be a visual object like a movie, or it could be a physical object like a sculpture or a painting. But in essence, the topic here is an object, okay? And it's an object, uh, sometimes the, um, the, the uh, category isn't just one. I'm sure some, you've realized that, that it's not always just one category. Uh, usually there's a primary category, okay? Sometimes it's just a primary category. And then there's a bit of a secondary category. Um, what would be the secondary uh, category in this case? Okay, so what was the work of art? Where did you see it? What made this work of art beautiful? The meaning of this work of art and the impact this work of art had on you. So what, do you, what would you say is the secondary kind of category that you should have in mind here? Yeah, it's an idea. It's an idea, absolutely. Um, why is it an idea? So it's, it, there's a little bit of an event here as well because it's where did you see it? So the event is there. But when you realize and you focus on these points here, so what made this work of art beautiful? What's the meaning of this artwork? What impact? So if you're looking at this or at these two questions here, you realize that it's an idea, right? The secondary, because you're focusing on emotions and thoughts. Okay, does everybody see that? Okay, does everybody see that these two questions, they target and they require you to express feelings and thoughts that you had um, with this? Hopefully everybody's seeing that. If you're not, let me know. Okay, all right. Okay, Rajveer says, yeah, I see that. I see that we have some emotions and thoughts here. Yeah, okay. All right, so it's object and idea. That's mostly what we're focusing on here. Okay, with ideas, we're focusing on our emotions and thoughts in this case, where they came from, what impact they had, the reasons for them, okay? So hopefully you see that. All right, so the secondary category here is idea. All right, um, focus on the primary, of course, so make sure that your primary is absolutely clear. Um, and then the, um, the tense, so I think some of you said it's a present perfect. Um, yeah, so the tense or the tenses in this case are present perfect, past, and present. Okay, so these are the tenses that come to mind for me when I look at these questions. So present perfect for sure, I think that's a very strong tense in this case. You see it in the question, right? Have seen or heard, right? So it's already hinting here in the question. And then you see the past tense as well. What was the work of art? Where did you see it? So you see that past tense as well. And then the present tense, kind of appears here, the meaning of this artwork and the impact. So here, the present tense, because that artwork, there's a good chance that it still has an effect on your thinking right now in the present. So they, they're again present and present perfect. Everybody clear on the tenses? So is everybody clear on why it's past, present perfect, maybe some past perfect and present? Not really future. Okay, so I know some people learn this past, present, future, but I don't think talking about the future in this case would be too sensible. Okay, so I don't think that would have a lot of value. Okay, so everybody sees that. That's great. Okay, and so that was our step two. Um, and of course, we remember that with objects, uh, we include um, origin, uh, function, uh, value, okay? and uh, appearance, of course. It would be very uh, awkward to talk about an artwork and not describe what it looks like, right? So we're talking about its appearance, its origin, its function, its value, and all of these make a lot of sense for any kind of artwork that you're clearly discussing, right? 
So that's what we're talking about. Idea, um, you have to consider its origin. So where did it come from? Its requirements, what you need to make it a reality, its results, um, and its improvements. Okay, and here you might add the concept of, because we're talking about an artwork as emotions. And I don't mean emojis, I mean emotions. Okay, so that's what you're targeting. So if you're thinking about all of these points in relation to the artwork, then you're definitely going to speak fluently for the two minutes. So again, the topic here is fluency in part two. Um, when you identify all of this and you have all those questions, you can really keep a fluent conversation or monologue because you're the one speaking, so it's a monologue instead of a dialogue. You can keep the monologue going, okay? All right, then what's the next step? So step three, okay? So these first couple steps, when you've practiced this, when you know this, they're very quite fast, they're intuitive, so you're doing this within 10, 15 seconds, right? Yeah, so think of two or three possible choices, okay? All right, so Abhishek says, think of two or three unique ideas. All right, good. So, yeah. Possible choices. Now, in this case, okay, um, there are several that you can think of because, uh, or it, it could be pretty fast here because um, you have three topics listed here. So you have painting, movie, and music, right? So here you might go, okay, well, maybe I'll think of one for each. I'll think of a movie, I'll think of a painting, and I'll think of um, a piece of music, and then I'll try to figure out what it could be, right? So uh, if possible, instead of thinking of three movies or three pieces of music, for this type of question where they actually give you kind of a list of choices, I would recommend trying to think of one for each, okay? So keep this little tip in mind. Like I said, always some new tips going on in these classes. So here's a little tip. If you are presented with a few different ideas in the topic, statement, uh, think of um, an example for each uh, topic, okay? So here I can already see that for painting, uh, somebody, I can't, can't remember who just said it, but Mona Lisa was one of the ones that was kind of given. And I'm sure we'll have some for movie and I'm sure we'll have some for music as well. Okay. All right, Carolina's suggesting Heal the World by Michael Jackson. Okay. Um, Abhishek says for paintings, how about The Last Supper instead of The Mona Lisa? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, Hassan saying for movies, I'd love to see Braveheart by Mel Gibson as the main actor. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, Rajveer, Avengers. <laughs> I probably wouldn't do that. Okay. And. Uh, Shallow, I probably wouldn't do either for Lady Gaga. And the reason why, I mean, pop culture is okay, but remember, it's a piece of art. And although I agree those are pieces of art, um, you might have a little bit of trouble convincing your examiner, especially if they're a little bit older, all right? So, uh, 
Murder on the Orient Express uh, by Agatha Christie. Okay, that's an interesting one. So, anybody seen the movie Baraka? If you haven't, that's definitely an artistic film. Yeah, for Dobbs, Avatar, it's quite artistic, I would agree. Um, uh, Victor says Angels by Mozart. How about that for music? Yeah. Or how about um, Ode to Joy by Beethoven? Yeah, I never could spell his name. Anyway, <clears throat> Beethoven. <laughs> Somebody will give me the spelling, I'm sure. Um, Janiel, Picasso's painting, it would have to be a specific painting. Okay. Uh, Kapil says, Pursuit of Happiness. Yeah, I love that movie, Kapil. So, Pursuit of Happiness. By Will Smith. I think it's... One of the better movies Will Smith's made. Okay, good. Um, all right, so we have lots here. So you've thought of a few good ones. Uh, Pride and Prejudice, both the movie and the novel, Hassan, I agree. Very good, very good choice. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, here we go. We have lots of choices. So we thought about painting. We thought about movie. We thought about music. Which one of these do you think would be the easiest to talk about? So would it be easy to talk about a painting like the Mona Lisa or the Last Supper? Or would it be easier and more fluent to talk about a movie like Braveheart or Pursuit of Happiness? Or would it be the easiest to talk about music like Heal the World? Okay, again, uh, it doesn't have to be the truth. Remember, you can make up information as you go along. Okay. So Abhishek says maybe the movie... Uh, Ferdov says maybe a painting. Okay. Uh, think about the why here. So Abhishek, why do you think a movie is a better choice than talking about music or a painting? So why would the movie be a better choice? Maybe even talking about Avatar. Okay. So why would a movie be a better choice. I actually agree that movie is probably the easiest choice in this case. So Abhishek says because there's lots of descriptive visual information. Okay. And Carolina says it creates more emotions. Yeah. Um, visualize, right? Uh, a painting is a still image. Okay. Music is audio only, okay? But when you're talking about a movie, you have moving picture plus audio, okay? Don't forget that movies like Titanic, for example, have very powerful soundtracks, right? So a movie combines the concept of visual and auditory experience. That's why movies are so powerful, because they have a combination of these. So you have a lot more content here, okay? There's much um, less of a chance that you're going to get stuck, and you have a lot of opportunities to connect ideas here as well between emotions, actors, moving images, storyline. So it's going to be much more integrated, right? <laughs> Hassan says, if the examiner knows the subject, it will be awkward to make up the information or lie. Uh, yeah, but Hassan, you know what? Don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. So again, this is where it's a good point, Hassan. Think about yourself not the examiner. Even if you're lying about the movie, as long as you're using good English, it's totally fine. And remember, different people remember movies differently, okay? So 
just go with it and don't worry about it. Uh, if you're really nervous, Hassan, you could say, if I remember correctly, right? So, or the emotion, or as I remember in the movie, okay? There's lots of different versions of movies as well these days. So I would definitely pick a movie here, okay? Um, let's put Titanic in there as well. I'm going to kind of give people a... So here we go. Uh, we have Braveheart, Murder on the Orient Express, Baraka, Pursuit of Happiness, and Titanic. Um, let's choose one of these. Okay, so one, uh, two, uh, three, four, five. I'm not sure who's seen what, but that's okay. We can make up this information as we go along. Maybe that's why I put Titanic in there. I think that's probably one that many, many of you have seen. Okay. All right. So uh, pick one of these and then uh, one, two, three, four, or five. Okay. All right. So Abhishek says four. Carolina says four. Victor says four. Ois says one. Jainil says four. Well, it looks like it's a good, uh, good mix between Braveheart and Pursuit of Happiness. Um, so let's go with uh, Pursuit of Happiness. We'll go with the less violent film <laughs> in this case. Yeah, Titanic would be a good one as well, I think. Okay, um, so let's do Pursuit of Happiness. Okay. Yeah, and if somebody hasn't seen it, it's going to be a spoiler, I'm sure, in this class. But hey, maybe it will inspire you to see it. So choice is The Pursuit of Happiness. Okay, and then the next step is, of course, as you remember, useful notes. All right, so give me some useful notes, thinking about the questions, uh, thinking about this movie. So what is it? Where is it? It's okay, Ois. Just hang in there. Make up the information. Ois, you don't necessarily have to have seen this movie to join in, and this is for everybody, um, because think about these. So what was the work of art? Where did you see it or hear it? What made this work of art beautiful? The meaning of this artwork, the impact it had. Okay, so... Um, First of all, what was it? Okay, so Victor says, made in 2003. Yeah, I think that's good to give some general information or background. Um, what's the storyline? So based on true events, okay. Uh, with family at home. Sure. That's for Dobbs. Um, yeah, Victor, very good. It's a motivational story. I agree. Okay. Now, students, you want your notes to be organized here. So before we get into the emotions that um, were elicited, uh, what is the background? So what is the movie about? Okay. about a man who, what happens? Okay, okay. Yeah, it's about a poor salesman Okay, so about a poor salesman that becomes successful and helps his family, right? Okay, so single parent, yeah. Yeah, he's a struggling single parent, okay? All right, good, okay. And uh, the director is Gabriel Muccino, I think is the, yeah. Okay. All right. Good. 
Okay, so um, so far so good. Maybe you saw it on Netflix at home. Netflix. Okay, uh, now keep in mind the questions, right? So uh, what was the work of art? Where did you see it? Okay, um, so maybe I would add something like powerful acting. Will Smith, right? Um, and then uh, um, think about these questions. So what made this work of art beautiful? Okay, why was it beautiful? Why, why would you say, okay, this is a beautiful piece of art? So Abhishek says it shows hard work and dedication, but why is it beautiful? Hassan said the movie got uh, an Academy Award for Best Actor in a Leading Story. Carolina said it's an inspirational story. Yeah. Yeah, so I would think about words like this. It's an in in inspiring story, the power of the human will, sacrifice, persistence, right? So it teaches people not to give up, okay, how to overcome struggles and challenges in life. Absolutely, okay, use our strengths. So those are parts of it, okay? So again, you're going through the ideas of object and idea, so appearance, origin, function, value. We're talking about these, and then the idea, requirements, results, improvements. At the same time, you're thinking about these points in your head as well. So the meaning of this artwork and the impact this work of art had on you. So what kind of impact did this artwork have on you, okay? Uh, remember, you have about one minute, so you wouldn't be able to get many more notes down than something like this. So what kind of an impact did it have on you? That's okay, Preeti, that you haven't seen it, just like with Ois, um, because now you have an idea about the story. It's about a single father who's a poor salesman that becomes very successful through hard work and pers uh, persistence, and he's uh, trying to be happy in life and show happiness to his child. Okay, so Carolina says, never give up and follow my dreams. Okay. Okay, and have you done anything? Um, so can you give me, Carolina, a real life example of what is a dream that you have that you're not going to give up and that you're going to uh, follow? Rajveer says, stay strong and be focused. Yeah, I got it, Rajveer, good. Good correction. So give an actual dream that you're like, okay, after I saw this movie, I was like, I have this dream. I'm not going to give it up. If uh, other people can do such amazing things, so can I, and I'm going to do this. And so what is that dream? Okay. Okay. So Carolina says to, to master English and go to Canada. Okay. Victor says to become a millionaire in the stock market. Good for you, Victor. Okay. So never uh, give up, follow my dreams, uh, master English, move to Canada and become a stock market millionaire. Okay. Good. All right. So now you have all of your notes. Uh, students, it is quite important that your notes are linear to what you're going to say. Okay. Uh, does anybody remember what city this happens in? So when you're thinking of context, you should think of when the movie was shot, the city or the, the place where the movie is happening, um, and uh, some of the key actors in the movie, of course, right? So in New York, right? The Big Apple, okay? 
doesn't matter. I think it is San Francisco, Kapil. <laughs> but it doesn't matter if you say New York or San Francisco. Just say. I think it, I think you're right, Kapil. I think it's San Francisco. But uh, anyway, I'm going to stick with New York. So it doesn't matter. Okay. Again, the truth is not that important. All right. So uh, let's have our first sentence ready. Okay. So that's your step five, always, right? Okay, so have your first sentence ready so that before the examiner says, okay, your one minute preparation time is up, please begin speaking. You can just right away start speaking, okay? So, sure, I think it is San Francisco, San Fran. Okay. So I'm waiting for those first sentences. So Carolina says, a beautiful piece of art that I have seen is the movie, The Pursuit of Happiness. Very nice, Carolina. That works just fine. Okay. And I like how you're using present perfect right away. That's good. Ferdov says, I decided to tell you about a magnificent piece uh, of artistic movie uh, called Pursuit of Happiness, which motivated me a lot during my uh, young adult years. Okay. I don't know about childhood for dogs. I think pursuit of happiness would be a little bit, um, advanced for children, but it's okay. Uh, Rajiv says a beautiful piece of art that I have seen in my life is the movie named, uh, the pursuit of happiness. Very good. Hassan says the piece of art that has had a great impact on me is pursuit of happiness. It is an uh, aspirational and motivational movie. Uh, very good, Hassan. I really like the paraphrasing and the approach there. Fantastic. Good job. Thumbs up. Okay. Uh, Kapil says, I would like to talk about a beautiful piece of art, a movie called Pursuit of Happiness. Okay, good. A couple of corrections there, Kapil. Okay, so a beautiful piece of art, a movie, or the movie, called Pursuit of Happiness. Victor says, I have seen a beautiful movie that is The Pursuit of Happiness, which motivates, motivates me to overcome challenges in my life. It's truly a wonderful work of art, okay? So Victor, I would include the word art in that first part right away, just because of the question, right? It's the actual topic. So describe a beautiful piece of art that you have seen or heard. So it's really important to get this word art or work of art or artistic piece into that first sentence. Okay. That's super important. All right. You want to show the examiner that you are specific and you have a really clear idea of what you're being asked. So a wonderful piece of art that has had a significant impact on my life is the movie called In the Pursuit of Happiness. Okay, fantastic. So again, this has to be uh, linear. So let's go linear and let's just go step by step here, sentence by sentence. Now, ideally, you're not staring at your notes when you do this, okay? Uh, but you're just kind of reflecting on them. So uh, let's try to make a sentence using these first couple of notes. So made in 2003 in San Francisco about a poor salesman. So give me a, a couple of sentences, one or two sentences using these first three notes to basically describe the movie's appearance, right? So here's where we're describing the appearance of the movie. All right. So give me a couple of sentences with that. Okay, put them into nicely phrased sentences, connect them. You're obviously going to need some vocabulary here. and We're going to bounce off of each other to get more vocabulary, good ideas on how to connect. And of course, I'll help you out along the way as well. Okay, so I'm trying to not cover the screen here too much for you so that you can put it together. And I want to show you here why it's so important to uh, kind of have your notes more or less in a linear fashion according to the questions and according to the category of object and subcategory idea. Okay. 
Welcome, sweet. Um, and send me an email uh, and join the chat. And when you send me an email, let me know that you have a tier two membership so I can hook you up with those uh, perks, okay? So Ois says the movie is um, produced in 2003 by Gabriel uh, Muccino and is set in New York City, okay? Ois and is set in New York City. You don't need to capitalize all those letters, okay? All right. Rajveer says this movie was released in 2003. Uh, in San Francisco, and it depicts a poor salesman who becomes successful and helps his family in fulfilling their aspirations. Nice, Rajvir. Now, Rajvir, there's a bit of an information mistake there. So released in 2003 in San Francisco, that doesn't make sense because that means, Rajvir, that the movie was released in San Francisco. Uh, but it was released globally, at least all over North America in 2003 for sure. So uh, instead of saying it that way, Rajvir, just like what I said with OS, so the movie is set. The correct verb here is set in San Francisco, okay? Or the story takes place in San Francisco, right? Uh, Victor says this film was made in 2003 in San Francisco. Um, which uh, and is about a poor salesman who becomes successful and helps his family. Okay, Victor, it's nice, it's concise. Um, yeah, it's a little bit tricky talking about movies, of course, in a foreign language is not an easy task, but nor is talking about music or uh, painting. So I think you're still better off with a movie. Uh, this film was made in 2003 and shot in San Francisco. Okay, or filmed in San Francisco. Hi, Sweta. There you are in the chat. Good on you. Join in. Okay. All right. Uh, Hassan says the movie was released in 2003 and set in New York City. The director is, because he still is, Gabriel Muccino. The main character is played by Will Smith. And the story is about a poor man and his wife, who has left him and he has to uh, raise his son. Yeah, okay, very good. So we've got some good ideas there, absolutely. Okay, so this movie was released in 2003. The story is set in that time in the city of San Francisco. Let's go. Why is that? No, anyway. Uh, San Francisco. So the story is set in that time in the city of San Francisco, and the main character, a poor salesman uh, who struggles to raise his son as a single parent is played by Will Smith. Okay. All right. Yeah, so a little bit tricky, but we're putting it together. Uh, here we go. So let's just do a little bit of repetition and fluency practice here. Just speak and repeat after me, okay? Um, if you have to, read. If not, do it just from listening to me. So, three, two, one. A wonderful piece of art that has had a significant impact on my life is the movie called In the Pursuit of Happiness. This movie was released in 2003. The story is set in that time in the city of San Francisco. And the main character, a poor salesman who struggles to raise his son as a single parent, is played by Will Smith. Okay. Um, discussing movies, by the way, and explaining movies to people in English is a great way to practice your language. It's challenging, and it's something that we do often, um, and we do it kind of in our everyday lives as well. So it's great practice, okay? All right. Okay, uh, let's keep going. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot. Uh...
is by Gabriel Muccino. And he does a fantastic job of bringing this story to the silver screen. Okay. All right. So now let's uh, let's keep going here with our other uh, points. So it's true events. Watched it with family at home on Netflix. Uh, powerful acting by Will Smith. Uh, motivational story. So let's try to um, let's try to put all of these into some sentences as well. Okay. So same thing. And this is why linear notes are so important because if you've discussed these points, maybe you didn't even need your notes and now you got a little bit stuck, you can kind of look at these and go, oh yeah, okay, it's true events. I can talk a little bit about that and why that makes the movie even more powerful. And then I can um, maybe talk a little bit about Will Smith's acting, uh, talk about how this is a very motivational story, um, and then keep going from there. So put that together into a few sentences as well. Okay, so this is what you need to practice for the cue card is creating useful notes and then stringing together those useful notes into uh, good communication, into strong sentences, all right? Ois says the story was very attractive and had a lot of influence on emotions for any person. Um, my friends and I have watched it a year ago in my home. Okay, Ois, good. So you're putting it together. Just pay attention to your grammar. Uh, Abhishek says the movie is based on real events about Chris Gardner. Uh, taking up an internship in a brokerage firm after he loses his life's earnings selling a product that he invested in. Yeah, very good, Abhishek. Okay, Hassan says the movie was watched by millions of people around the globe because it's a motivational story. It has a lot of great lessons. I watched the movie on Netflix in the same year that it launched with my family. Very nice, Hassan. Those are all really good sentences. Okay, so... Yeah, when a movie is very popular, Hassan, we say blockbuster. So this movie was a blockbuster. Uh, and along with millions of people, I had watched it in, uh, watched it at the time of its uh, release with my friends and family in our home. We rented <laughs> it on DVD and watched it together on the weekend. Yeah, very nice. Okay, so I'm just feeding off of what you're writing there, okay? So Abhiman says, um, the movie is based on a factual story that motivates people to work hard uh, and can today be watched on Netflix. Okay, again, Abhiman, remember the question on the card, on the cue card says, where did you see it? So that's very important, okay? Uh, Ferdov says, this film was based on a true story and it had a huge influence on many people around the globe. Um, most of them took a motivational message including myself. So for Dobbs, be very careful, okay? Um, remember that when the card is directing the questions at you, you, then make your communication about me, my, I, I felt, this is the way it impacted me uh, in my mind, okay? Myself included, okay? So it's very important to do that, all right? So keep directing it towards yourself so that the examiner knows that you're being specific, okay? Um, 
The story is based on the real life events of Chris Gardner. I don't, I, I think that was his name. I don't remember, but again, it doesn't have to be the truth. Um, who became impoverished after losing his life earnings in bad investments and then um, rose to the top of a brokerage uh, firm starting at the bottom of the ladder as an intern. He was strongly motivated by his son. He wanted to give him a happy and prosperous uh, childhood. All right, moving along, yeah. Uh, of course, I'm teaching you some vocabulary here as well, everyone. So anytime that you see a new word come up, uh, make sure you write it down. So impoverished, if you don't know this word, it means to become poor or to be poor. So learn this word, okay? Uh, prosperous, prosperous means that there aren't any financial problems. You have what you need, okay? So make sure to include all of that, okay? Oh, it says, I'm becoming very excited about this movie, and I will watch it tonight. I'm sure many people will. It's actually, even for people who have seen it, it's a great rewatch. It is a truly inspiring film. So um, very good, okay? Rajveer says, this movie is based on real-life events, and I have enjoyed the powerful acting of Will Smith while watching this movie on Netflix with my family. Very nice, Rajveer. I like how you're directing it to yourself, okay? So it's your experience, okay? Hassan says, the lesson that I learned from the movie is that I have to be determined and focused to pursue my life goals and never stop trying. There is a quote I wrote on my office from the movie that said, when you fall on the ground, fall forward so you can see what you fall on. Very nice, Hassan. I like it. I'm gonna, I wish I could just copy paste out of the chat there, but I can't because I'm working on two computers. So uh, I'm going to verbatim it. So the lesson that I learned uh, from, uh, it's a perfect answer, Hassan, from the movie uh, is that I have to be uh, determined and focused uh, to pursue my life goals and happiness. I'm going to add a little bit there. And never stop trying. Um, I even took a quote from the movie and wrote it on my office door. Uh, when you fall on the ground, fall forward, so you can see what you fall on. Okay, nice. I like it. Okay, so you're doing well here. You're probably approaching the two-minute mark. What should you do at this point? Okay, so you're approaching the examiner's probably getting ready with uh, your time is up so what should you do at this point okay so you've covered most of the information okay Ferdov says quickly look at the questions again so Rajvir says check the card make sure that you've answered everything yeah absolutely okay so you go back especially check those last couple Question, so what made this work of art beautiful? Yeah, we kind of answered that. So good acting, um, nice message. The meaning of this artwork, I think we covered that. It's motivational. The impact this had on you. Yeah, so we answered these, okay? So it looks like we're good. Where did you see it, what, what it was? So yeah, we're doing good here. So I have maybe one more sentence that I can add 
before the examiner stops me. What would be a really good ending here? So what could be a final sentence um, that I can end on here where I can kind of guarantee myself that band nine and keep that good fluency? What would that be? So what could be, what could be that last sentence that would be a good idea to just kind of put in there to summarize and conclude everything that I've said in response to this cue card? Carolina, if you're still there, any ideas? Oh, it says something about influence, something about my dream. Yeah, so Carolina, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> you're still there. Yeah, so you can say um, one of my dreams is to move to Canada, and I will never give up pursuing this. Um, and for this reason... I really think that this movie is a wonderful work of art and highly recommend it to others. Okay. Yeah, so very good. So maybe finish with that. Uh, and then also importantly here, get in the topic one more time. Okay, so it's a good idea to finish with the topic, okay? Um, so kind of throw it in at the end of your two minutes and also to start with the topic, okay? Does that make sense? So does that make clear sense that when you're responding to that cue card question, grab the topic, don't paraphrase it, use the topic exactly as it appears in the statement and throw it into your first sentence and kind of throw it in to your last couple of sentences as well. So that gives the examiner a really good idea of start, finish, he's on, she's on, topic, and that's really good. Okay, all right? Yeah, nice, so everybody gets that, okay? So start and end on the topic, okay? That helps you to stay on topic, uh, Ois. So remembering that you need to do that uh, in part two will also help you to stay on the topic. Okay. Yeah, Victor, you can absolutely answer the questions in any order. There's no rule that you have to answer them in the order that they came. Okay, we'll review this in just uh, 30 minutes when we do part three. We'll do a little repetition of that response. Okay. Um, I'm going to say goodbye for now. I'll be back in half an hour. And in half an hour, we'll continue with speaking part three, which will be questions related to this topic of part two. Uh, for everybody watching, check us out at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. We've got lots and lots of uh, help there for you to learn the right strategies, improve communication, English, and your band scores. So spend a couple dollars, join the premium package. It'll be well worth it. You're very welcome, Abiman, Hassan, Jainil, Rajveer, Carolina. Good contributions today. Hopefully I'll see all of you in half an hour. I'm Adrian, signing out for now from Budapest. Bye.